Hey y'all, so as the title says, this is going to be a tutorial about making visual novels and we're going to be using RunPy, this cool game engine that you can download online and it's free and the games work on your phone and your computers and yeah. So you're just going to go to the RunPy site and then click download latest version and you're going to choose for whatever, you know, computer you have, if it's Windows, if it's Mac or if it's Linux. And you're going to also scroll down because one thing you cannot have, well, what you can't not, uh, I'm wording this so bad. One thing you need, basically what I'm saying, is an editor. And so with this editor, you have to actually program in it. That's where all the code goes. And I recommend Editra because that's what I've been using and it's what's literally recommended in RunPy. But yeah, just download one of the editors and the actual game engine, and we're gonna get started. Okay, so this is how RunPy looks. Literally, once you open it up, this is all that's there. There's an example game called The Question, which you can launch the project and also look at the script. And there's also a literal tutorial, and the t it'll like tell you all about RunPy. But also doesn't touch on certain parts, so that's why I'm doing this tutorial. Also, just you know, to bring it to people's attention for those who don't know anything about RunPy. There's a tutorial right there. I suggest you look at it still. So yeah, what we're gonna do first is create a new project. And so when you guys click create new project, I'm gonna show you it here. Like what's gonna pop up? It's gonna pop up your whole file browsing thing or your finder or whatever else you have and it's going to ask you to choose a folder you want your projects in and so I made a literal folder named RunPy project so you can have your games in there and then after that you're going to be prompted to name your game and so I'm going to call this tutorial game um, and then it's going to prompt you to choose what size you want so I highly suggest just doing 1280 by 720 as it says, it's the most reasonable one. The only reason I'm not doing that is because I'm so used to like the old resolution that I'd have for RunPy games, where it would be 800 by 600, which are like they're more windowed type. So I'm gonna be using that since that's the art assets I have for this tutorial. Um, and yeah, and so after you set your size, which I hope you did 1280 by 720. You're gonna be able to choose um, basically like the kind of layout that you want. So like on the menu screen, it'll be either you know whatever color on white or whatever color on black. And I'm gonna have red on black right here. All right, so we're gonna continue, and now we're gonna wait because it's processing. And now your project's ready to be messed with. All right, so after we do this, like you start up your new game, you're gonna go click edit script. And that's what you're mainly gonna use forever. And once you click that, it's gonna immediately open up whatever editor you used. Um, like right here, it's Editra. This is how Editra looks. And this is all that's in it. Like it already has like a default thing that's in your game that you can obviously, you know, get rid of and mess around with. But I'm gonna explain this. So you see, as you can see here, it says this script of the game goes in the file. Um, basically, this is a comment. So how comments work is basically like you put like a hashtag and then you can be like blah, blah, blah. This is a comment. And the computer will ignore these lines of code. So like anything that's not a comment, the computer is like taking that information and making it do something. So like right here, it's defining a character, like the character Eileen. One of the characters. Um, that's you know the default Rumpai um, mascot basically. Um, and also here, like you know, the comments are also explaining what's there. So it's like if you put scene BG room, then it's showing a background. But since you know there's no, well I didn't explain that yet, but there's no image there. It's like it says it's gonna be a placeholder by default. And the same goes for sprites, so if you should put like show Eileen happy and it's supposed to show the sprite, it's going to put a placeholder because nothing is in the project as of yet. And so to basically write in RunPy, all you're doing is like having like quotation marks and being like, lol, this is text. 
you know? Um, but if you put a letter before that, then it's going to show a character's name with, with that. And I'm going to show you how that looks like right now. Um, if editor could close. Alright, so we're going to launch the project. And there we go, it's at 800 by 600 like I wanted. And you hit start. And whoop, see? Lol, this is text right there. And there's no name there. And this says BG Room, which is the right BG, well, scene anyway, that was put in. And then Eileen Happy, because Eileen Happy is supposed to show. And next, if you hit space, then it's, you have Eileen talking. Where you created a Red Pie game. Once you add a story, pictures, blah, 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 you can release it. And that's the whole game. Now, you must be wondering. Why the heck did it go back to the title screen? And I'll show you right now, if I could, there we go. So, this line right here, return. Once the script, once the game hits that line, it takes you right back to the main menu. Return means game over, basically. So, that, yeah, that's one thing. But I think you guys want to know how to actually have your images in there instead of being placeholders, I'm sure. So as you can see, it says define EA equals character Eileen. So we're going to change that. We're going to put, well, I'm putting this, but if you have a character that you want to put in there, go ahead, do whatever you want. And also, it doesn't even have to be like define E. It could be the character. You could actually put the character's name if you wanted, but that would mean you'd have to put their name before every single text. So it's a lot easier just to have, you know, one letter there. And so we're going to put Rita, well, I'm going to put Rita because I'm using the character Rita. And she's going to say stuff, and we're going to get rid of this right here. And so basically, so I've created some sprites in Photoshop. It's What's really helpful is like just to like open up in Photoshop or Medibang Pro because that's, you know, free or whatever one you want. You, it's good to like create a new document and create it in you know the width and height of the game so for example since um you know most people use 12 by 720 you can do that and then just like make it like i don't know whatever size oh not cropped you could you know select how whatever size you want first that you think that most sprites could be in i'd suggest like getting the whole height and just getting the width that you want and then cropping it and then bam, now you know the sprite size that you need to have for all your characters. And then the background size is just, you know, 1280 by 720. Um, for me, um, I did 300 by 600 since, you know, my game's going to be 800 by 600. Um, and it's to basically help, so like for example, I have this character Jackie here. It's basically helped me so I can be like, okay, so this character's like this tall, and like this character's that tall, and you can have them in the same just file so for reference and just to make sure like you know there's not going to be anything above them but it's like really helpful so you also have to save your images as pngs i cannot stress this enough so for example like if i save this as like i saved them already all over here i have them all as pngs because if i don't then the white background will show when they pop up in the game and png means transparent but it won't be transparent if you have the white background on you have to make sure it is off in whatever art program that you're using okay and so now that we have that the next thing you're going to do once you you know have your files so basically you're going to take your images and you're going to drag it right into your game like not into the that but into the folder game that's in there and then images because you know it makes sense you're you go straight there, and then bam, all your images are in one spot, all your codes in one spot, pretty organized, not hectic and chaotic at all. Alright, and so next what we're going to do, we're going to, alright, I'm going to have to cut this out, um, or not. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, an image. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to Emitra, Editra. We're gonna type image, and we're gonna be like, so we can be like, uh, Rita Happy. And Rita Happy will equal, and you have to make sure that it specifically is the file name that you have. So, oops, I didn't wanna do that. So 
if we go back to the Rampai project and to the images, Reed is happy and um, PNG is called Rita Smile. So we're gonna just copy and paste the name or just make sure that it's, you know, the right name and has no spaces that aren't supposed to be there. Like for example, if I did Rita Smile space, it's not gonna show. It needs to be like that. And there it's gonna show. So if I type in show Rita happy, let's actually go back to Rempi and launch the project so we can see this happen. Yeah, we're going to, oh, we're going to go to start, and that was a bad idea, because there's nothing in the text. Oh boy, do not do what I do. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to have Rita talk, and we're going to be like, hi, my, my name's, my name's Rita, exclamation points. Um, we're going to go back to Rampai and launch the project, and oh boy, this. Allow me to explain. One thing you will encounter a lot in Renpai is, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Errors. There we go. And the one that you always have is the ident identification mis mismatch. So basically what that means is that, so you see how everything's aligned right here? This right here, not aligned. So you have to make sure everything's aligned perfectly how Renpai wants it to be, or else it will yell at you and say, no, you cannot play this game. Alright, and so now we start, and look, Rita's there, and she says, hi, my name's Rita, and that's the game. <laughs> I know, short and sweet. So, you know, you can add a lot more to this, so, for example, I want your character to be in, you know, in space, so you can show them at left, or you can show them at right, or you can show them at center. I'm pretty sure the one is center, but it might be middle. I'm not entirely sure, but just test it. But we're going to put show Rita at left. And so Rita's going to appear at the left, and then we're going to have our other character, Jackie. So we're going to create a new character right now. Define J equal character. We're going to say Jackie. And also, by the way, like, even with what you can see in, like, the tutorial that's pre-made in here, you can change the color of the characters' names and, like, the color of the text that they have, um, within the character, basically, parentheses. But show that possibly later. I'm not sure. But we're gonna have Jackie F. And we're gonna go and get that file name. I'm gonna copy and paste it so I don't mess it up. <laughs> So we have, ooh, oh, ignore that. So we have, hi, my name's Rita, and Jay, like, ew, what do you want? <laughs> and we're gonna have Jackie appear on the right when she says that. So we show Jackie, uh, at right. And we're gonna test if this works, because last time I checked, at left and at right should be working. So let's try this. And hey, what do you know? I'm right. Because no errors. So, here we go. We have Rita at the left. We have Jackie on the right. And she's all like, grr, and stuff. And yeah. Ooh. Little tip I want to add. So you see how the text... I hope you guys don't hear my sister screaming. But you know how the text kind of just comes out immediately? You can change that so you can make the text speed slower or quicker, like as you saw. So if we go back and we have the text speed here, see, it actually plays out a little slower. Oh, I spelled, I misspelled one. Good job, typos. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, so let's see, what else is there to cover? Um. Alright, so now you know how to make images. Also, let's make the image for like the little apartment or a room. I made it, I drew a really quick apartment in like five seconds. So we're going to do that. Apartment equals apartment.jpg. We're going to put scene bg because, wait, no. Oh, I see now. Okay, we're going to do scene apartment and then it's going to show. Okay, so the next thing 
I would like to tell you guys about is about labels. So obviously, as you can see, there's only one label right now. It's called Label Start. It literally starts the game, obviously enough. But they're basically like scenes, not like scenes like this, how it's like the background, but like, you know, because like this is like the first scene that the car the player will play out through. And if we make another one, like we can put label, uh, let's put label uh, sadness. And we're gonna just be like, we're gonna have a comment like, here, Rita is upset. And so in this label, you can put like, oh no, I am upset. <laughs> oh, whoops, I accidentally did something I didn't mean to do. But yeah, something like that. And another thing with labels, so like the game will go in order like of what's there. So it's just like the computer's just like going line by line. So once it finishes like through all of label start, it will go on to label sadness. Um, but you don't even have to do that. And even like the returns, like you can have a return be here, but also there. So it's like, you'll never get to see label sadness unless I teach you about how to switch between labels. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna type jump. So it's basically jumping to another scene. It's gonna be jump to sadness. Either way, it would have jumped to sadness uh, if I didn't put that there, but I guess I'll put a label in between there so you guys can literally see how jump works. So let's say, um, label, uh, uh, more smiles, let's put more smiles, um, and here we're gonna just have Rita be happy, or, well, you're not mean. I'm just tired. <laughs> I don't know what I'm typing. But yeah, so it's gonna skip over this entire label because it jumps straight to sadness. And once it gets to sadness, it returns. So, allow me to show you. Oh, if I can close this. Allow me to show you. Alright, so we're gonna start. See, and the apartment background thing that I made is right there. Hi, my name's Rita. Here, what do you want? And now, jump to the Rita sadness. Oh no, I'm upset. And that's the game. Okay, so now for the time you guys have probably been waiting for, which is making choices in Rempai. Now, the script may look a little different because um, I keep uh, messing up with the recordings and having to redo this second half, but it's okay. Just bear with me, it's gonna be okay. One thing that I wanna mention now, so it makes sense. So you may notice that there's two Rita images here now. There's Rita Happy, Rita Gasp. And here it says hide Rita Happy and show Rita Gasp. So basically what that's doing, it's like, it's changing like Rita's emotion, well, her sprite technically. And it's like, it's super simple. You're just hiding the previous image and then showing the new image right where the spot or it previously uh, it previously was but I'll show you that after we touch a bit on choices so let's get on that so basically to make a choice in Rempai you're gonna first type in menu so that's gonna be what's gonna contain your choices and it's gonna tell the computer hey these are choices that could be cho you know chosen on screen and like create the images for it so we have the menu the colon and we could put like choice one here and then we end that and we could have another colon and th then you know it'll do a thing it'll do a thing from right there and so then what we could do next we could copy and paste this so then we can just have like choice two choice three you know um one second the t warders about to go off anyway as i was saying um so yeah so then we have choice one choice two choice three and they can all just they could all just display text but they don't have to as i was saying but earlier about like jumping we can make this so you know this can make more sense instead of jackie just being r entirely r just mean for no reason um we could be like hmm what should i say so then the choice could be what she tells rita so choice one instead could be, hi, dot, 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 my name's Jackie. 
and then we can have this just jump to more smiles. And it can only do it can only get to that point if we make that choice. And it'll, for the other one, it's going to be like, "Hi, <laughs> I'm just sleeping." And so then it can just jump to sadness. And you can only get to there, you know, by oop, forgot to do that by having it right like that, right? So we're gonna test this out and then you guys can also see the sprite change for Rita. So we launch the game, there's no errors, so we start. Hi, my name's Rita, what should I say? My name's Jackie, well nice to meet you, boom. Hi, my name's Rita, what should I say? Hi, I'm just leaving. Rita gasps, oh no, I'm upset, see? And it works perfectly fine. So what really can make choices, you know, have more of an impact is variables. And now, according to Google, variables are an element, feature, or factor that is liable to vary or change. Now, basically, what that means is like RemPy variables are like integers, which are numbers, floats, which are numbers with decimals, and booleans, which are true or false statements, and strings, which are words. And those are all just, you know, programming terminology, but if it's a little confusing or hard to wrap your head around it, just like think of words, numbers, and true or false statements. Those are the three things that can be. So for example, let's make a variable right now. We're going to make a boolean, which is the true or false statement. So to declare any variable, you always put a dollar sign. Then you type the variable name. So we're going to put is happy. So we can check if read is happy. And and like I said, it's true or false. So it can either be true or it can be false. And we're going to start with false. Now, what you need to remember to do is have variables to be uppercase. The first letter needs to be uppercase. If we type in false lowercase, the computer will be like, what, what's false? I don't know what that means. It's not defined in my system. And it will yell at you and it will give you an error and you won't be able to proceed. <laughs> so you have to have uppercase false, uppercase true. And we only have one equal sign here. And I say one equal sign because what we're going to do next, um, we're going to check, you know, if is happy is true or not. So let's say if, we're going to have an if statement. And an if statement basically it's saying if whatever's in the parentheses is true to do the thing that's below it. So basically, we're going to put if is happy equal equal false. I'm going to put like, hey, is happy is false. You know? And then else, because basically else is like, if it's not this, it's the other thing. And is happy can only be one of two th of two things, true or false. And I could basically just put a comment in here because this is the same thing. I'm going to type it out. This is the same thing as typing if is happy equals equals true. It's literally the same thing, but else, you know, makes more. It's like easier to just type, you know, and then you can put, hey, is happy is true. Like it makes more sense just to have that else there. And we're going to copy and paste this. Um, like right in the other labels just so we can be like hey we're gonna like check to see if it works you know and you know nowhere we're we've only set it to false here we haven't changed it but we can change it right when Jackie is nice so we can put dollar sign is happy you're gonna do the same thing but one equal sign because one equal sign is setting the variable to a thing double equal sign means checking remember that so dollar sign is happy equals true. And so then, you know, we're going to see if this works now. Let's go launch this project. So we start, hey, is happy is false, like I said. And so let's have Jackie be nice. Well, nice to meet you. Hey, is happy is true. So and then if we did the other choice option, is happy would still equal false. Make sense? Yeah. All right, whoops, I forgot to close that properly. All right, all right, cool. So I want to show you just another way to, that we could, you know, ooh, whoops, I did not mean to do all of that. We could do um, a variable and that's going to be not using a boolean, but using numbers because it's really helpful. So let's get rid of all of that. Um, continue to get rid of all of that. And so instead of is happy, we're going to have happy points. 
So happy points are going to equal zero. And so we're going to do the same thing as we did before, where we're going to be like, if is happy, oh, pff, I said is happy, <laughs> if happy points equals equals zero. So actually, wait, wait, wait. Let's rewind, actually. We're not going to put equals equals zero. Did you know that variables work with greater than or equal than? Because then you can put greater than or equal to. But we're not going to put greater than or equal to because we're going to say if happy points are anywhere above zero, then, you know, we know that Rita is happy. You know, Rita is happy. There we go. And so else, meaning if happy points is below zero, Rita is upset. Now the only problem with this is that because if happy points equals zero, then it's going to still say ha Rita is upset. And we haven't done anything to Rita yet, so it wouldn't make sense. So in most programming languages, you have this thing called else if. So it's like, if, if this thing equals true, or if that thing equals true, or if neither of these equals true, then go to this. And it's like only one or the first one or the second one can only equal true. They both can't be true. Or else eh, things could get a little funky with that. So that's why we have is or if or else if. So in RemPy though, it's not else if spelled out, it's L if. L if like that. So we're gonna have if and then we're gonna have L if and we're gonna be like L if happy points equals equals. Don't forget the double equal sign. Zero. And we're gonna be like, Rita is neutral. So we're gonna copy and paste this on the other parts just to make sure it works. Um, make sure that everything's aligned. I know I said indentation earlier and I meant to say indentation. So I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> Cause usually sometimes when you copy and paste, it'll come out like, not like that, but it'll be a little spaced. Just make sure that it's all everything's aligned or else the computer will give you errors and I'm sure no one wants that. All right, so what we're gonna do next, um, one more thing I want to do is, so this is how we increase happy points and decrease them. Now you'd think that it'd be like, oh, so you just put a dollar sign, you type happy points, um, and then you just put plus one. No, 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 In programming, you have plus equals one. So it's like you're taking happy points, you're taking what like what's there, which is zero, and you're just adding one to it. So that's, I guess, the ideology behind that. Um, so it's like dollar sign, happy point, minus equals one. It's like the same thing. Like, sure, it's a little weird, but it's, it works the same. It's just plus equal, minus equal. Pretty simple, you know? And so then, you know, then we can check if, you know, this actually works. Let's launch the project. And no errors. So we start. Read it as neutral. See? So hi, my name is Rita. What should I say? Hi, I'm just leaving. Oh no, I'm upset. Rita is upset. And Rita's neutral. And hi, my name is Jackie. Rita's happy. Boom, 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 boom. And you know, this is kind of mainly what you need just to make a Rempai game. Like, all you need is a story, some characters. You could have like multiple endings, which is, you know, that's what's really cool about visual novels, because all you got to do is just have your choices, and, you know, it doesn't have to be just two jo choices, and those choices can, you know, affect booleans, and, like, you should, probably should have your booleans, like, near where start is, so then you can just have, you know, happy points, and then you could have, um, is, you know, we could have bad end, like, so we could have bad end equal false, and like I said, like, all, um, variables, like, equal or they like defining them and creating them and changing them it's the same thing um see like it's the same thing whether it's a number a number with decimals or true or false statement it just works the same and you can like i said you can just do a lot with that just create a story create some characters think of what variables you might want to mess around with to make it more interesting or if it could be a kinetic visual novel where there's no choices and stuff, you know, that works too. And now you know how to do it. Um, so I guess the last few, last, what, three or four points I want to leave you off with. So like, okay, first of all, Google is your best friend. Like if you have any questions, type in Google. Like when I first started like recording, I had to go to Google like 
too many times to be like, hmm, is it Elsif or El? Like that whole part I forgot about because I've been programming Immunity for too long. Um, yeah, Google's your best friend. Like if you have any questions, you can ask Google. Um, and also, RemPy has its own documentation, so it like can show you like different things in the program, and it also like kind of restates what's in its own tutorial. But you know, it's helpful to have it just open if you ever need it. Because, like, for example, with characters, like, I mentioned it earlier, but I didn't show you guys, like, you can change the color of a character's name, or, like, the text that they have, and you also you can have music, and also when it comes to images, um, I don't think they have it in here. Yeah, they don't, oh, they have transitions, like, that I didn't tell you guys about, but it's really cool. Um, oh, here it is, yeah, so basically, like, um... What's a cool thing about Rempai? Like, you don't have to do show hide, like, how they have here all the time. You can have a thing where it's, like, image, and then you have the name, and then you have the emotion. So then when it's, like, you show the character once, and then- Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh, my cat just jumped on me. <laughs> what do you want, cat boy? Gosh, such an attention hogger. Hold on, let me keep talking, you guys. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, basically, so then instead of having just M, you could be like M happy, M sad, if you like do the image thing. Not entirely sure, remember, not entirely sure I remember how it works, but that's why I said Google is your best friend, and to just check out the tutorial. Um, <clears throat> another thing, there's the Lemasoft forums, which is like the forums for like visual novels, where people like post their games, their works in progress, there's people looking to make games together. And all that other type of stuff it's really cool and i suggest you check it out um and last but not least there's itch.io this is where you can actually you know upload your games all types of games and also because like um Rempi games can be for come out on windows linux mac android phones i think ios phones don't know how it works but yeah and there's like a whole like visual novels is a popular tag like i'm sure you didn't know that Doki Doki Literature Club, like, was made in Rempai, but it is. But also, let me just point out, um, I recommend this game, or I recommend that game. That was made in Unity, though, but it's, it's really fun. I recommend that game. I, I recommend that one, and that one, and that one, and also that one. Yeah. So just, like, yeah, go explore, make games, have fun. If you have any questions, leave it below, because I guess I'm putting this on YouTube. Um... If you guys want me to like keep going and talking about Rempai or even like other game engines, uh, I guess just ask. I'm down to do anything really, even though I don't know how to do it like properly. <laughs> um, and yeah, the thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good day. Hope your week keeps being good or gets better. Um, and see you next time if there is one. Oh, uh, get off my computer! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>